All right. So let's finish up what we were talking about with the E cage, the E cross A cross C cage. All right. And that's also pentatonic. It really is. Um, because if you look at the first three here, the, the uh, first, the fourth, and the fifth here on the uh, C cage here, sorry for moving about so much. Okay, I got them both right now on the screen. The first, the fourth, and the fifth here, all right, is C, A, all right, and then the fifth is G, all right. We call, come over to the E cage and uh, you know it's still caged E goes to what to A and A is about you know just that many caged letters over from the uh, the fourth which is the E so it, it, it works out that way. Uh, I can't show you right now that <laughs> on a chart, but you'd see it right on the chart everywhere. It's uh, making all kinds of sense. For instance, when you go up a modal scale, let's say in the E cage here, you start on an E-shaped root, okay? So your chord would be would be this, and then the second would be G minor shaped, and notice that in the G cage the second's A minor shaped. So this is going up a pentatonic scale, uh, A going to G. Okay, that's going down a pentatonic scale. So the interesting thing about cage, and it's important to not important to remember if you get going up or going down wrong but that it's there for you and that is in caged when we start caged here C to A to G is going down a pentatonic scale C to A to G okay down a pentatonic scale but this is a G shaped C okay so C shaped C A shaped C G shaped C is going down a pentatonic scale next is E shaped C okay but when going <coughs> within the cage when going up a modal scale okay it's it's going up a pentatonic scale and it's just adjusting for the major or the minor so it's E G A now we're going up a pentatonic scale E G A C D you see that E G A C D now you see the A A there <coughs> that's important <laughs> um, it's still you know keeping within the bounds and that's kind of thing that's going on right here is a half step there there's a half step into in between those similars and the E and the E minus there's a half step there well I'll move along because I want to show you some really cool stuff that that has um, that I figured out and um, sometimes it's not easy you know <coughs> sometimes you know, it just it just dawns on me, and it's it's easy music, but it's hard to get up uh, out of bed and make a chart or something, or um, play it, you know, or just go through it in my head, you know. Um, so we have the two cages that are um, the the Locrian is kind of like part of an expanded uh, Ionian pentatonic. Okay, because we it goes to the third there, right? So it's root two, three, four, six root. Okay, that three, four, six roots in S two L there. It starts on the top of an S three S seven R root. Okay, do we do an S two L there? And then what are we going to build on top of an S two L? Once again, we're going to build an S three L here. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. The five six warps over. 
and then we just do the 7R2 on top characteristic of what what cage is that what cage is that when you have this here and like that there that that's an easy one it should be an easy one I, I, I'm not seeing it right now um, the R the the the, the E shape pretty much with the two three five six root two two three five six root two okay so the reason why I didn't see it right away is because with the seven there and that's important the seven's important for a root a root scale okay You know to get that scale otherwise it's just pentatonic warp over for these top two guys in this all right so that's the the two cages we got we got into it with them with the uh locrian and the lydian cage it's not a a really big expansion like substituting the seven for the r and then for the third substituting a two and then for the um let's see for the fifth substituting a four that would be like seven two four that's a really big cage expansion right we, we're not doing that <laughs> not talking about that i'm just talking about uh when you've got the the capo or the fret nut when you're down there you definitely want to um, be aware that you want to use this kind of a pattern if you're uh, down near the fret nut there so the three let's say I'm starting for the three although we usually don't want to start from the three to demonstrate the usefulness of this pattern as opposed to this one right just as opposed to a regular old uh, there it is a regular old short barred pattern stack all right where we would start on the third there i'll just take this off because you have to be able to bar this because you're going to go lower than and then just up again we're just going to run out of just going to run out of strings you know but the important thing to remember about the pattern stack is you can start it anywhere so start on five six i mean i'm, I'm going to start on the on on the g because i like to play and see it's quicker for me um, but it could be anything five six of anything you could call the low the, the E string the fifth if you do you're gonna be playing an A So you go You'd finish up that s to uh, 3l there and then go right into whoops Right into an s 2l on top there those, I love when I kind of hit a lower note like that because it reminds me that I need to work on more harmony and use more open strings, you know, to make some pretty good harmony. But when people just start, you know, doing the same thing like up here and up here, you know, it's okay. You can get, it, it has a great sound, but you don't want to just start sliding notes up in here and keeping the same notes down there because you, you get into trouble that way. And then when you try to bar it again, you've got these top and bottom strings really vibrating big time and you've got to quiet them down so be careful about that so this is the uh this is the the barred pattern stack okay it's now as opposed to this pattern stack and i i just made these these uh improvements here where on this pattern stack we've got the three minors here all right the three minors so that's a guy chipping rocks looking for minerals the three minors so the phrygian and then if you start on the sixth you get the the aeolian we talked about that so let's move on from there and then you get into this pattern which only goes to the right so that that's just an adjustment i made on this uh, description of grouping these essentially those scales all right and so